South Milwaukee Historical Garden Tour. Casey's going to be doing a live demonstration this morning. Got vendors, food, ice cream, lots of stuff to do for the family. So today I'm going to show you something that actually involves both my passions, gardening and decorating. And I do planters that uh, you can use inside and you can use outside. For most of us that grow things indoors, we tend to really steer towards those indoor plants. But what happens at the, in the, during the season when they're indoors? They're dying on us. At the end of the season, we're like, what are we gonna do with them now? It's Christmas. I'm in Christmas mode. I want sparkles and pine boughs. I don't want this tropical plant in my house. We're all guilty. Am I right? Am I right? So you don't wanna have to throw that in your basement and, and, and milk it all, all winter, right? So what I've started doing is creating planters that can be indoors and outdoors by using perennials, shrubs, and trees. That way at the end of the season, you can plant them outdoors and cross your fingers for their return. If they're, an, or if they're a perennial tree or shrub for our zone, they will return as long as you properly plant it and um, cover it and kind of baby it for that season. So what I'm gonna show you today is something unique. A lot of people are seeing those fairy gardens that are out now, you know? And us ladies love fairy gardens, am I right? Fairy gardens? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so with the fairy gardens, you know, it, it's something that us ladies like. So what I've done is taken the fairies out of the picture and added some a little bit more of a rougher texture so it appeals to both men and women. And my husband, he loves the planter, so that's why it's, it's man approved. I do. It's man approved, okay, guys. So, um, and our style is very um, gardeny. It's very natural. And what I try to create in my planters is um, a really natural appearance. So, if you guys like to go for walks or hiking or a stroll through the woods, right now what you see a lot is that bright, beautiful green. You know, that beautiful green, but then you get these branches that never returned in the winter mixed into it. And that's what I like to create in the planters. So how easy would it be if you're splitting your hostas this year and you're putting this in here, grabbing a few free branches and going to your local greenhouse to maybe get a few spikes? It's not that much. It's not that hard. And it's super simple. It's just an idea that is out of the box that you may not have seen, all right? so. Let's get started. All right, that's what we're here for, right? To learn a little something. So in a lot of my containers, uh, some of you may or may not know, I'm known for doing monster planters. Some of my planters can reach 13 to 16 feet. I do really cool combinations with big old branches, morning glory, sunflowers, castor beans, coleus, big potato vines, all that cool stuff. But today, I, had, I got stuck with the car. So I, <laughs> I didn't get the truck today. So I have something a little bit more petite. And I also am showing this is something I actually put on the middle of my kitchen table. So this really, really freshens up the entire space for summertime. In all my containers that are outdoors, I always put a time release fertilizer in there. Um, I use the brand Osmocote. That's what I've grown up with. I grew up in a greenhouse business. There's my mom right over there from Wayne Stoddard's Greenhouses. Um, and they just came off of a hard season. They just came off of a hard season. And uh, if you haven't heard, they sold out. So I was kind of stuck going a couple other places. Um, but um, a few of their, the, the items that they did have left, I, uh, I went over there and grabbed and took. So. Um, I'm going to kind of mix some of the different materials that I'm using today. And so with Osmocote, you usually want to use um, two tablespoons per every 10 inches. And I don't have that width today. The reason why is because this planter is also going to be used indoors. I use time release fertilizer as what I call a backup plan. So the time release fertilizer releases fertilizer over time. So people put that into their planter like, oh, I'm good all season. You're not. 
that's just a backup plan for those rainy weeks we get. We're getting these rainy weeks, you're getting dumped on, and guess what? That's when that time release fertilizer is the backup plan. It starts releasing that fertilizer. And that way, if you don't add it, and we get all that rain, your stuff's all of a sudden looking really lime green, things aren't blossoming as well. You may even end up with like a little bit of aphids and thrip, but that's a whole nother topic, okay? Stay focused. All right, so with the Osmocolton, in a normal planter, if it's outdoors, I add that. But because this is gonna be an indoor planter, I, you have more control over when it gets watered. So I don't need it because I water with fertilizer through my, through my water. And I use uh, Jack Soluble Water Fertilizer. It's Miracle Grows professional brand. I use the all-purpose fertilizer with these type of combinations. But if you have a lot of flowering plants, you're gonna wanna use Jack Water Soluble Bloom Booster. All right, so that's what I suggest, only because that's what I use, I trust it, and it's proven to work for me for many years. All right, so first off, I just added soil in here, and all I used was a potting soil. My potting soil I also get from my mom because it comes free. So, <laughs> I, just, I just keep loading up that razor, and I'm like, don't worry, Dad, uh, you can build me later. <laughs> Um, so yep, so I fill it up with potting soil, all right? So you, also what you want to do then is keep extra potting soil on hand because, you know, don't be afraid to get messy. Dirt's going to fall out. You're going to have to replenish. So as you can see, I kept, you know, about, I'd say a half inch to almost an inch from the surface of the pot here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tallest item here. And as you can see, everything is kind of, it just looks really uniform by the time you're done. So I always start off with the tallest item and that kind of gives me an eyeball of where it's actually going to start. It gives me a center point to start with. So what you're going to want to do is once you take it out of that pot, you're going to want to have something nearby to put the extra soil in. You want to be able to break up that root system. So you're just going to go like this. You're not going to tear it apart like crazy, you know? You just want to break it up like that with your fingers. And the reason for this is it helps those roots take off a lot faster. You can plop it in there without doing that, but imagine another week or two of it being able to take off with those roots. In, in our growing season, we don't have that kind of time. We only have so much time to have things take off. So that's why I always suggest break up the root system and then plant. All right, so you go and you dig your hole, which you guys I'm sure already know. You're at the garden tour, so you love gardening. So we're just gonna go like that. And you wanna make sure to press around because these are shrubs, they're a little bit more top heavy. So you wanna push around that area really nice. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna add, and these are like those little ones that they carry for fairy gardens. And um, I know they're gonna have them next year because they got really big into fairy gardens. They're getting known for that. Um, on dumping that in the good soil. All right, so I'm breaking up the roots. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna place it on this side because I have another item I wanna to have to trail over here. So there we go. And you get really messy with it. And if you, um, if you like to get your nails done, I'd suggest using gloves because uh, <laughs> my nails always look not good. All right, there we go. Okay, so now it just looks like a short and a or a tall and a medium. So it doesn't really look like anything much. But then we start adding something else. And now we're going to add the spike over here. We're going to break up those roots. Now with spikes, they're a little bit of a slower grower. And spikes are not perennials in our zone. So don't expect to plant them outside and have them come back again. Want to keep it take it in in the winter and plant it into a container with time release fertilizer because we all know that when once a plant goes in the basement it's not coming up till next spring and it's not even going to be seen until next spring when all of a sudden you're like oh that's right i've got some uh, little gems in the basement and then you find it and it looks really bad well these guys can really really handle it dry and they can really really handle it just being you know left alone in that basement. So, um, and every year the spikes keep getting bigger and bigger and you can just take the bottoms off and it ends up looking 
like a spiked palm. And uh, actually, I just did an interview with Mary and Steve Barney on the garden tour here. And they actually have spikes that they've wintered over many years. So they have a few really large ones. And they had one for over eight years at one time that was like huge. So um, you guys will have to see their five-year-old spike right now. That's really neat. Okay, so I'm going to put the spike over here. All right, so right here, I'm going to leave this space open because I want that for my branches. I want this space here for my branches. But I didn't, in this one, I didn't add what I'm about to add. And that is this. All right, the English ivy, okay? Now, the reason why we're adding this is to add just a little bit of trailing for you guys. In, in my home, I like to be able to see the pot, but I want to add more of, you know, a trailing habit in here. Plus, it's so good for that indoor air uh, in your home. So, we're going to go ahead and break that up. And these are slow growers, too, and you can use these year after year. And they get ginormous. Okay. We're going to push that down in there. You want to be really nice and firm and push that dirt down because at the end we want to top dress it with stones. All right, so now that we've got that in there, you know, there's just enough space here to still be able to see the stones when we're done for that decorative feature. Now let's add our six. Now, in the farmhouse I grew up in, um, I was the eighth generation born in that home. My little Lana over there, she was the ninth generation born in that home. And uh, my family's been in the town that I live in now for, uh, before Wisconsin was even a state, on the same property that I live right now. And this tree that these branches come from are one of those trees that have been there forever. So when someone who's gonna be receiving this, to know that history of this planter, you're gonna look at it and remember that piece of in story that this tree has seen many generations uh, grow up right under it. I remember hanging from this tree when I was little, but nowadays I wouldn't because it's tilted and all hollowed. Soon it's gonna probably fall and I'll have to make a brush pile with the <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stick these in there. And you wanna be really firm and push them down. So I like the branches to kind of come out just a little bit too, if you can see. Just kind of come out naturally like they would on the tree. And just like you would see in the woods. And then this one here, I like to play around a little bit to make sure That's where I want my other ones. So then you gotta push down really hard, but be sure not to break your sticks. And I'm gonna put one more in there, just for fun. that by the time gardening came, I walked out there, I'm like, where's my mulch? There was no mulch. 
much. It was just mud. So I'm like, me and Jason are like, what a waste of money. Right. You know? What a waste of money. And work because we actually, what did we do? We laid that mulch in an hour. We were like, let's Try to get quick. it done before dark. Yeah. Yep. Pellets of mulch. So um, it was really, really funny. And after that, we, we hired the stone to get done. <laughs> I'm like, that's enough of that. All right, so now we just kind of lay them in there. And once you get them in there nice and heavy, you want to be able to push them down so they really form into that soil. So that way they're not just like loose. So when you move it, they're like spilling all over. And, and also just so you guys know, since you're here for the entire demonstration, we're gonna want you guys to um, get raffle tickets for this. They're free, but we are, we are going to have you guys just put your name on the raffle ticket and I'm gonna pick it right away. And whoever wins gets to take this guy home. So a lot of times too, you see these uh, these pots, these clay pots in the terracotta color. But I found this really cool colored um, pot at that new at home store on 27th Street. Have you guys been there? Yeah. So you didn't paint that? No, they have these amazing colors there. Yeah, and it's a really cool store. They have a lot of garden stuff there, like containers, pots, planters, yeah. furniture, decorating. My husband's like, you're on a budget. <laughs> All right. All right, so then there you go. And then if you're indoors with it, you're going to want to be able to have something to catch that water. So we're going to put a plate under it, a nice matching one. So not one of my dinner plates. All right, and there you go. And see how I left this open here? That way you can still see the natural stone and have that feel in your home. All right, and that's that's the planter. And then the first time that I water it, I go through and I actually water with water-soluble fertilizer. So I, I usually take about a teaspoon of Jack's water-soluble fertilizer and I mix it into an entire uh, can, watering can and then I use that to water. It's the perfect mixture. I still suggest using the manufacturer's direction, even though I have my own method and it does work. So this is the planter. And now I'd like to be able to get you guys those raffle tickets and then I'll be willing to take any questions or anything that you guys have.